Thank you for your uh, introduction. Uh, good uh, afternoon, good, every, uh, good morning, everyone, actually. <laughs> uh, actually, I got ma uh, many questions about China, and uh, we have many discussions about China uh, before my speech. So there's a lot of questions and very much subject to this discussion. Today, I would like to talk about something about China, four points. Number one is economic uh, slowdown. Number two is energy demand. Three is oil and gas falling dependent. Last one, you may feel actually, that is a new circuit. We call one belt, one load. Now back to the first point, economic slowdown. The slowdown in economic growth has been witnessed inside and outside China. This tendency will be maintained in the next five years to come, I believe, and possibly will be maintained into the year 2025 because of the changing economic developing patterns at home and we're facing external pressures and new environment we're facing today. So we in Beijing feel the slowdown is just a normal, just a normal. Speed is something associated with weight and sight. And now I have a question for all of you, maybe for Sean. Could you run as fast as you did 10 or 20 years ago? What's your answer for that? Probably not, probably not. A slowdown of economic growth in China has come over its growing weight and size of the GDP since today at over 10 trillion dollar, 10 trillion dollar, not one trillion in 2007 or 300 billion or 13 years ago. Now the 10 trillion, please remember this. So the slowdown of the economic uh, over the weight is just the normal. We now have factor in disease slowdown into our economic and energy transition outlook into the 2030. Currently, government leaders and policy makers are confident in the GDP growth at some range around 7%, which could be an indicate in the next five years. At the same time, however, their priorities have clearly been given and placed to the quality of economic growth, including structural reform, pattern shift, economic pattern shift, efficient uh, enhancement, plus new height of international cooperation, like one belt, one load, I will talk in a minute. I believe the growth rate at around 7% is at adjustable in some range under our recommended scenarios. It may also be unsustainable under the current uh, policy scenarios, by the way. I argue, I argue that uh, it is not necessarily to stick to the 7% itself, my personal view, as a matter of fact. Instead, 6.6% for the next five years is good enough to satisfy the Chinese goals by doubling its income per capita by the year 2020. And most importantly, slower growth will leave the bigger room and time window in order to conduct a further structural reform and efficiency restructuring taking place in the next five years. As all know, ladies and gentlemen, this is a part of the new normal or new realities in China with some impacts on Asia and the rest of the world. Some impacts on energy and other sectors and fields some possible uncertainties will rise maybe anyhow open for discussion. But message I would like to convey today is that we have to look at the today's economy in China 
in different angles and perspectives, simply putting aside its slowdown in economy. Pay your attention to its quality and pattern shift in the years to come. Yes, there are some number of uh, outstanding issues, questions, uncertainties relevant to its expected uh, uh, success of the pattern shift. I believe, in short, uh, economic growth and uh, solid development in China, whether or not it remains the one of the main engine of the world economy, so highly depends on the new type of opportunities in China could be grasped, and the right policy could be taken, and the potential to be tapped in the next round of the, of the year. This is uh, my view about the slowdown. The second is energy demand. As discussed uh, under the current policy scenario, energy demand growth in China will be upward into the 2030 at the pace close to the two percent without a plateau, means keep growing, but slower than previous we have imagined. As a result, CO2 emission could be peak in the year 2030, as committed. But under our uh, recommended scenarios, thanks to the designated slow GDP growth at the 6.6%, Energy demand, especially coal demand, could be reach its plateau in the year 2020 and onward. This could be present a new reality, new climate we have looked at, at the energy industry uh, carefully. Likewise, lower demand could pay its way for relevant policy tools employed for restructuring, efficiency enhancement, followed by the rethinking and repositioning of the coal sector, oil sector, and the gas sector to be a part of the nicer energy mix, while non-fossil fuel could be rich 20% ahead of the schedule. So the three point is about the, uh, falling oil and gas dependence. Dependence of falling oil and gas will continue to increase but at a slower pace, ending at 63% uh, under the currency policy standard, or 62, a little bit uh, lower under my recommended scenario for oil. 37% under the current policy standard, or a little bit lower under our scenarios for gas in the year 2020. You may find this date are lower than those you have seen elsewhere. The key factors behind my observation for both oil and gas are not only met of slowdown in domestic demand, but also substitutions of oil and gas as fuel in the final consumption. We believe electricity vehicle, LNG vehicle, plus coal gasification, and uh, biofuel combined will play an increasingly important substitution role in the next five years. Also, both energy saving and the public transportation system upgrading will be paid their way as well in its uh, uh, urbanization drive. These elements have to be observed and reviewed seriously in the years when we look at China. Uh, many people, experts here, ladies and gentlemen, bike almost gone today in many uh, major cities like Beijing. And very soon, some larger part of the oil addict vehicle in major cities could be gone with the wind tomorrow if you return to China someday. Natural gas is another source of the energy under reviewed also Gas demand is, will be leveled off, will be increased, but leveled off since last year. The level of the gas input could be re-justified accordingly since the country could face some surplus of the supply 
of gas in the year 2020. You may leave it a surprise or surplus. Because some mass planning issues at home. So some imports from outside, from including some source from neighboring country could be delayed. Last is one belt, one load. Against the slowdown, China has been facing some industrial overcapacity. International expansion is a must. But China, this is not the whole story of its proposed strategic initiative entitled One Belt, One Load. By name, this name not uh, formally uh, coined, I believe, personal belief. You may know no more new silk loads. But uh, in my sense, one belt, one load actually is not one belt or one load. We may have to take this concept as a network or interconnectivity. That will be a core sense of the concept. In sense, therefore, one belt, one load is by no means Chinese strategy or major plans toward other countries or regions involved. Instead, it is a strategic initiative with intent to co-work with all relevant countries, parties for common interests and win-win development. We distinguished strategic initiatives from strategy itself. We find this is important. The distinctions clearly indicate our core and the genuine source about of the one belt and one load. Once again, this is a strategic initiative, not a Chinese strategy or plan toward other countries. Simply because the, the distinctions links or interlinks between its internal capacities and external requirements, links between Chinese in interests and those from other countries, roughly 64 in, in total, along the belt and the load. Links between all participating parties involved are critical to the initiative. In other words, one belt, one load is an open, inclusive, multi-wing, mutual benefit-oriented initiative. With this in mind, it is a recommend that China has to work with not only 64 countries around the belt and uh, load, but 64 plus countries and the parties. An international cooperation or, in, or industrial capacity distribution, especially in infrastructure, manufacturing, and uh, some other energy-related sectors, is recognized as a main recommendations to uplace tomorrow's level of international cooperation under the one by one load initiated to the new height. However, we, to be honest, we're facing some risks and uncertainties in this regard, or some conflicts possibly. So far, there are some, I believe, uh, uncertain or risks still uh, understandable and under control. We, but we have to take a good care of these issues and raise our capacity to take care of the risk and uncertainties together with the countries and the parties we have to work together with. So that is some sense of behind the one belt and the one load. This is something we will convey. But uh, one belt, one load is only one of a number of generally the strategic options leading the country to its future of choice. Some other options are just the name for your attention in addition to one belt, one load. That is China manufacturing 2025, echoing industry 4.1 4 in Germany. Structure reform, as I mentioned, mass innovation and increasing boom, internet plus drives, in addition to some other similar ones you may familiar, AIIB, Silk Road Fund, and the Zemin International, Internationalization. 
So eventually, in one world, I would like to say China could be reborn as a new swan, deserve to be explored, to be watched, to be discussed, explored closely and collectively with the new eyes on it. And now I think I have to stop here for discussion. <laughs>